uh, we got a question uh, from Riley. And Riley says this, and I got a little note from the people who send me the questions who compile them. Don't skip this. I'm starting my weightlifting journey with starting strength, and I got a great value out of it before transitioning to kettlebell training, which is not un unusual. I mean, starting strength is uh, where you know it's where you start. Uh, I was lucky; I got a chance to start at Southwood Junior High after I trained myself for a few years. And at Southwood, we did power clean, front squat, military press, and bench press. And I still would say for the bulk of the people, if that, I, I still think it's a, a far better way to start than 90% uh, of nonsense I usually see. In fact, I'm convinced of it. Um, I was really surprised to see Mark Ripito dissing the value of kettlebells so nonchalantly and completely. Yeah, I, you know, I... You know, I'm, I know Mark. We've had we've had dinner together. We've talked. I was on his podcast. I was a little surprised why he just said they were a waste of time. Having said that, the fact that I've been asked this question on now on my Q and A, on Pat Flynn's Q and A, uh, on pod two, two or three different podcasts from Europe, people have asked me, "What do you think of Ripito's comments?" So. I think Mark nailed it because everyone in the business is talking about Mark's comments. So Mark is, is you know, it, it, I mean, it seems to me the best thing to do now is be, you know, the, I mean, there is a value and we know that. Uh, I mean, the past six, seven, eight years in the United States, I mean, and the research is great. Um, you know, saying something dismissive about, some someone else or something else really seems to uh, to get a lot more uh, traffic than uh, you know the way I do things, which you know I'm the moderate's moderate. You know I'm so balanced. You know I've had you uh, nice fine people email me that I need to stop being so woke, and I had to I had to ask my daughters, what do you, they mean by woke? And I guess it's the fact that I believe in the the absolute dignity of every human person, which of course is a foundational belief that many people uh, in Western civilization believe, uh, especially those who follow a certain faith tradition that came out of uh, Nazareth. Um, uh, so, you know, I, when, when, I, when, I heard, when I heard that he said that and, and, and someone in one of the uh, uh, podcasts showed me the, the clip, um, I mean, I don't know if Mark had prepared it or just said it, I, I don't know. I haven't talked about it, um, but uh, I, I just don't think, I, I don't think that works. It'd be like saying dumbbells have no value. You know, when I, when I look at the training that I see some of the people at the senior center do, the good training that they do, that there's a real focus on uh, dumbbell complexes and dumbbell work. Man, I, I walk out of there going, I gotta make sure I keep my dumbbell training uh, and dumbbell thinking up because if what you have in the senior center is dumbbells, you make a program on dumbbells. I like kettlebells. Uh, I did a sur uh, not a sur I did a workshop this weekend where I, well, and I'll just say this. Most people still are using kettlebells like weird looking dumbbells. Uh, whenever you use a kettlebell, you should always swing it into the clean. You swing a swing, you swing a clean, you swing a snatch. Uh, and people are still dead hanging, which drives me crazy. The hinge, the hinge and the goblet squat are why I have to recommend the kettlebell for anybody who wants to be an elite performer. Um, you know, because of the way my my limbs are made and because of the way I, I'm, I'm designed, when I do a heavy deadlift with a standard barbell, it's more of a leg press than it is a, a deadlift. I'm just hanging on for dear life, you know. It is funny because my deadlift technique is probably terrible, but it, I also lifted the most at that massive powerlifting meet when I competed. You know, I've only deadlifted a few times heavy in my life. And I, there are stories behind all three. One was to break the gym record. The other was to win a bet with Bob Rillo. And the third was I just asked the official what was more than anybody else lifted, and I, and I pulled it. I pulled 628 with no training. Um, my, my first deadlift ever was 555, so... And then the next year I did 600 because Bob said I couldn't do it. Uh, he's right, I didn't. I did 605 because we didn't have two and a half pound plates. <laughs> um, so it, it goes on. 
as you are someone who has done barbell training, Olympic lifting uh, for over 40 years, uh, no, Riley, I've been lifting since 1965. I don't do math well, but I, I'm starting to sneak up on 60 years in the weight room. I assume that you are not biased and well-versed in all styles of training. What is your take on Mark Ripito's topics? Well, my, my biggest concern at always, you know, is, you know, when you, when you, when you, when you just kind of randomly go like this and say, you know, there's no value to this or, or that, or this is, you know, this is a bunch of crap and this is great. It, it's, you know, when I was working with the, the workout people that shall not be named, um, uh, fit, um, one of the things it was, uh, everything was my way or the highway. And that was really difficult for me because, um, uh, just cause, okay, I'm not ever going to do a kipping pull. -up. I'm not going to do it now. Maybe to save my life, I will. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Chris, uh, the, uh, Danny Cavallio uh, showed me that a much easier way to get over a wall. So I don't maybe never have to do a kipping pull up. Um, I'm not gonna do kipping pull-ups. I'm not gonna do burpees. I'm not gonna do 400 meters of lunges. God, just, oh, just put a target on my chest. And, uh, uh, but I don't dismiss, I mean, I, I, I do cause I make fun of it cause I can't help myself, but I'm not going to dismiss what your, you, your mom and her sister do at the recreation center in the water. I think, uh, aqua aerobics has water aerobics has great value. And, and then after that, they go to the step class. Good for them. And then they go to Zumba. By God, trying to find a space in a Zumba class. They are packed to the gills. Good for them. Um, when you come into my world, which is mostly performance sports, uh, to be honest with you, um, and, you know, dealing with uh, collision sports and collision occupations, you know, you need a very large tool chest to work with anybody who's in those fields. Um, I work with American football, um, and if you want to coach American football and all you do is a power lifts, you, you know, you might have big numbers on the wall in the gym, but you're going to get slaughtered out on the field of play because there's so many more qualities needed than just being damn strong. I think that when you, good coaching is the mix and matching of all the tools that are available to you. Uh, when I started when I really started to teach the swing well, I had one of my athletes, he was the last, very undersized young man, not very big. In fact, I'm bigger than him right now. He was the last person cut by the Green Bay Packers. And he was so close to making the team, it's too bad he didn't. But he came up to me one time uh, after a football game and he really, he really could hit people hard. He told me that once he figured out that the kettlebell swing was tackling, that not only did he become a better kettlebell swinger, he also became a better tackler. And boy, when he hit you, you stayed hit. So to be a good coach, you can't just say, here are the three exercises you have. Now, I have books up here that do that. You know, like like some of Pavel's books will be like, uh, okay, that one there I just touched. It's uh, the, the kettlebell snatch and the bent press. Uh, this book here, deadlift and uh, side press or something like that, yeah. Um, some of these others, just one or two exercises. I got an Olympic lifting book up there. That's just snatch and clean and jerk. Um, uh, that's fine. If all you have, you know, like Pavlo says, if all you have is a nail, uh, pardon me, if all you have is a hammer, the whole world is a nail. Fortunately, I have a full tool toolbox at every facility I coach in. I have a full tool toolbox in my home gym, a massive home gym. And so for me, uh, I, if to, to stay with this beaten down uh, cliche that I'm, I'm overusing already, you know, if I am a master workman, I have to be able to use every piece of equipment that makes not only my job easier, but gets the job done. And my job is to you know, develop long-term <clears throat> elite performance. And if you're going to do that, uh, you know, you need more than a stick with two cement uh, coffee cans on the end, which is the first dumbbell I ever actually lifted. 
<clears throat> my brothers made a, a homemade uh, weightlifting bar with two coffee cans filled with concrete and uh, a metal stick stuck between them. Uh, that's fine. In fact, uh, you could probably train fairly well using that. Now, I don't know if you'll be the Olympic champ with just that. I don't know if you'll be uh, a professional athlete with just that. But anything you have is better than nothing. But the more tools you can learn how to use, uh, the better you will be as a coach, trainer, athlete, and human person. Uh, the other thing I like a lot about kettlebells is when uh, the lockdown hit co with, with COVID, as some of us remember, I had a couple people borrow kettlebells from me, and I was happy to do it. And interesting, a few of them came out of COVID better than when they went in. So, um, and that probably is true true about every single tool. It's, you know, it's it's the workman in addition to the proper use of the tool. Gosh, I hope that helps.